For this video, I'll be covering chapter 35. This is care of the patient with an addictive personality. So you have addiction. This is excessive use or abuse of a substance, display of psychological disturbance, decline of social and economic function, uncontrollable consumption of the substance, including the dependence. The statistics say of the people who start drinking at the age of 14 or younger, 44% will develop alcoholism. About 100,000 deaths each year are related to alcohol consumption. So you have three stages of dependence in the early stage. This is increased drug tolerance, defending drug use in response to family concerns, and they have good prognosis for recovery even without a treatment program. In the middle stage, they have moderate impairment. They use the drug to feel normal. They experience blackouts, and they have a low chance of recovery without treatment. In the late stage, it is severe impairment in all areas of function. Unemployment and often homelessness occurs, and there is no chance of improvement without treatment. So alcoholism. Alcohol is a CNS depressant. The active ingredient is ethyl alcohol or ethanol. An empty stomach increases the rate of absorption. 90% is metabolized by the liver. It has a diuretic effect, and the legal limit is 80 milligrams, which is 0.08%. Fetal alcohol syndrome. This is a congenital anomaly resulting from maternal use of alcohol during pregnancy, and two drinks per day have the potential to cause adverse effects in an infant. Alcohol withdrawal syndrome. This occurs in a person who quits drinking abruptly. So the signs and symptoms include diaphoresis, tachycardia, hypertension, tremors, nausea or vomiting or both, anorexia, restlessness, disorientation, hallucinations, and seizures. Tremors can occur six to 48 hours after the last drink and sometimes last for three to five days and seizures can occur 12 to 24 hours after alcohol cessation. You have what's called delirium tremors. This acute psychotic reaction is a result of excessive alcohol consumption over a long period of time. The risk of death from this complication is as high as 15% with treatment. Signs of DTs are increase in activity, sometimes to the point of extreme agitation, disorientation, Fear with an appearance of panic, hallucinations, and elevated temperatures. And DTs most often occur one to four days after cessation of alcohol and usually last from two days to a week. You have the Korsakoff psychosis and Wernicke encephalopathy. These are two brain disorders that sometimes occur with chronic alcoholism. So Korsakoff it is a short-term memory loss, disorientation, muttering, insomnia, hallucinations, painful extremities with foot drop affecting gait. And in Wernicke, this is thiamine, which is vitamin B1 deficiency. It causes brain damage in the temporal lobes. So they'll experience memory loss, aphasia, involuntary eye movement, and double vision, lack of muscle coordination, and disorientation. So for your nursing assessment, your subjective data, it will include the person's normal using or drinking pattern, date and time of the last drink or drug use, the specific substance, and the quantity. Objective data can include needle tracks and small scabs on the forearms, back of hands and insteps, which indicate IV use, frequent sniffling, stuffy nose, or harsh non-productive cough. Your cage questions. This is beneficial in affirming alcohol abuse. So two or more affirmations to these questions indicate probable alcoholism. And there's a little picture there would be those four questions. Diagnostic tests include blood and urine. 
If a person ate a poppy seed roll, you will appear positive for heron, so you want to remember that. Your nursing interventions, the first step is detoxification. This is the removal of the poisonous effects of a substance. Safety of the patient is a primary concern during this time. So the side lying position and oral suctioning should be considered if oral secretions can be aspirated or if vomiting could occur. If swallowing is intact, the head of bed should be elevated at least 30 degrees to encourage better air exchange. And the use of night lights and removing extra furniture that could be misidentified will reduce disorientation. Denial is confronted in a non-judgmental manner. And many are malnourished and suffer from loss of appetite. So administration of multivitamins and thiamine are ordered. You want to conf confront the patient's denial by relating incidents and problems to its use and encourage the patient to explore alternative ways of dealing with stressful situation. Have them express responsibility for their behavior. So next is rehabilitation. So after detoxification is rehab. The objective of rehab is to help the patient abstain from the substance abuse. They can administer the disulfiram, which is the anabuse. And these side effects include facial flushing, nausea, tachycardia, dyspnea, dizziness, and confusion. You have Alcoholics Anonymous, which is AA. The foundation of AA is a 12-step program that assists the dependent person in admitting powerlessness over alcohol. Next is drug abuse. So you have CNS depressants. These include alcohol, sedative hypnotic medications, and opioid analgesics. They have problematic side effects, including respiratory depression, rapid tolerance, dependency, and untoward effects, such as seizures or status epilepticus accompanying sudden withdrawal. So you have benzodiazepines. They became popular as a safer alternative to barbiturates. Valium became the most frequently prescribed anti-anxiety agent. You have Roiponol became the date rate drug. Your opioid analgesics. So heroin, it is a widely abused drug in the US. It is a schedule one drug that has no medical use. Opioids replace natural endorphins in the CNS, which makes them drug, which makes these drugs highly addictive. Symptoms of acute opioid overdose include respiratory depression, pinpoint pupils, stupor or coma, and then they're going to give Narcan for the antidote for drug overdoses. So you have withdrawal symptoms. These usually peak in two to three days. They include flu-like symptoms and body aches, watery eyes and runny nose, dilated pupils, vomiting, cramps, diarrhea, diaphoresis, tachycardia, hypertension, chills, and fever. Next, you have methadone. It is a synthetic opioid that helps suppress withdrawal symptoms in the morphine and heroin addict. And once the patient's condition stabilizes, the methadone dosage decreases daily until the addict is methadone free. So those were the depressants. Now these are the stimulants. They include caffeine, nicotine. And with that, people who smoke heavily, who stop suddenly, experience withdrawal symptoms that include craving, irritability, restlessness, impatience, hostility, anxiety, disturbed sleep, and disturbed heart rate. And the treatment is nicotine gum, transdermal patch, and nasal spray. You have cocaine. And abuse by snorting erodes the nasal septum and often causes sinus sinusitis and rhinitis. Overdose potentially produces cardiorespiratory distress and seizures. So you have amantadine. It is used to reduce the craving. Also, neonates of addicted mothers need close monitoring. So swaddling or wrapping such babies snugly is often comforting. Amphetamines. 
So methamphetamine is a potent addictive amphetamine that causes the powerful release of the newer transmitter dopamine. So over time, dopamine depletion in the brain results in Parkinson-like symptoms. Brain cell damage is sometimes permanent. Next, you have hallucinogens. These drugs alter perception and thinking, and some of their effects sometimes last 6 to 12 hours. So these drugs are PCP, your LSD, and your MDMA, which is ecstasy. So for PCP, it's a powder that easily dissolves in water or alcohol. Users often sprinkle it on other drugs such as marijuana. Overdosage of PCP sometimes becomes apparent through symptoms of schizophrenia like psychosis with extreme violence or attempted suicide. Seizures and coma are also possible. LSD, its effects potentially last more than 12 hours. An LSD experience is referred to as a trip. Crossover of sensory perceptions such as hearing colors and seeing sounds occurs. Alter perceptions such as melting walls and fear of, in fear of insanity and death sometimes trigger panic attacks. So risk of LSD include flashbacks, bad trips, lingering mental disorders such as severe depression and schizophrenia, and general impairment of mental function. Your MDMA, which is known as ecstasy or a molly, it produces symptoms of muscle tension, bruxism, which is grinding of the teeth, nausea, blurred vision, chilling or sweating, and many use baby pacifiers to ease the teeth grinding effect. Cannabis, this is marijuana. It remains a schedule one drug because of its high abuse and addiction potential in the absence of proven medical use. It's used for analgesics, antiemetics for chemotherapy, tranquilizer, glaucoma medication, and antispasmodic for multiple sclerosis. So next is chemically impaired nurses. It is estimated that 10% of nurses in the US have a dependency problem. The ANA adopted a policy that recommends offering treatment to chemically impaired nurses before disciplinary action. So symptoms to look for would be frequently absent from the unit, rapid changes in mood and performance, increased somatic complaints, and patients report they did not receive their medications. So it is important for nursing colleagues to report to suspect behavior. They have the peer assistance program. This is also called diversion programs. And these programs administer contract agreements requiring the nurse to undergo treatment and monitoring for a period of several years in order to keep his or her license in good standing. So let's review. Don't forget. Diaphoresis, tremors, and hypertension are all symptoms of withdrawal from alcohol consumption. 44% of those who start drinking at the age of 14 or younger will develop alcoholism. About 100,000 deaths each year are related to alcohol consumption. In the middle stage of dependence, the user must use the drug to feel normal. Very few people in the late stage of dependence will recover without treatment. The legal limit for alcohol is 0.08%. An affirmative answer on two or more questions on the CAGE questionnaire is reason to assess more closely for possible alcohol abuse. As few as two drinks per day may cause adverse effects in an infant. Withdrawal signs from alcohol can occur as early as six hours after cessation of alcohol intake and sometimes last for three to five days. Care for the addicted patient starts with detoxification and is focused on keeping the patient safe from the symptoms of withdrawal. So keep the patient safe from aspiration and seizure. The focus of rehabilitation is for the patient to abstain from drug use. The foundation of AA is a 12-step program. 
When a person who is taking Anabuse consumes alcohol, severe nausea, tachycardia, shortness of breath, confusion, and dizziness are experienced. Rohipono is known as the date rape drug. Narcan is given as the antidote for drug overdose. Methadone is given for the heroin addict daily until the patient is stabilized. And the methadone is reduced gradually until the patient does not need to take it anymore. Over time, dopamine depletion in the brain can cause Parkinson-like symptoms to occur in people who abuse amphetamines. Some hallucinogenic effects of PCP can last 6 to 12 hours. The manifestations of overdose of amphetamines are frequently permanent. A baby born to a drug-addicted mother should be swallowed, sw swaddled, placed in an area of low stimulation, and minimally handled. LSD causes flashbacks or bad trips, unpredictability, and the flashback may occur years after ingestion of the drug. The use of an infant pacifier will reduce the damage to the teeth for a patient who is manifesting bruxism, which is grinding of the teeth. And the peer assistance program, it allows the nurse to retain licensure and continue to work under supervision, although possibly in an area where access to controlled drugs is difficult. So thanks for watching. Remember to like and subscribe to get all notifications of the videos posted and good luck.